I'm so pleased to be with you today through the marvels of technology virtually. My name is Artie Fishbaugh and I'm the Executive Director of the Montana Arts Council. We are the state agency located in Helena that's charged with boosting local economies, improving education, and revitalizing communities through the arts. We do this through a variety of resources, programs, services, grant programs, and professional development. We have a staff of eight, and our budget is about a million and a half dollars a year. A quarter of this is state general fund, paid through your tax dollars, and almost half of our budget comes from the National Endowment for the Arts, a federal agency. We've worked for a long time with Living Art of Montana, and our hats are off to them for the fabulous work that they do. I'm here today to talk to you about arts and health care. When I talk about the arts, a lot of people think that we're talking about paintings on the wall. But I'd like us to broaden our perspective today and think about the arts as all the arts, music, dance, theater, writing, crafts, photography, traditional arts, all the different kinds of arts, including literature. A lot of people might say, the arts are great, but they really don't have much to do with me and my daily life. But when you think about it, everything that we experience outside of that produced by nature involves the arts. The music we listen to each day on our radio or iPod is composed by musicians, recorded by the musicians. The newspapers we read or books or magazines are created by writers and then laid out by graphic artists. The TV, movies, videos we watch began as a script. Then there are directors, there are production designers, set designers, costume designers, in addition to the actors and the photographers. So there are just tons of arts involved in all of that. In fact, the coffee, coffee cups we drink out of, the lawnmowers or cars that we drive, the rocket ships that we send into space, all of them began with the art of design. So in fact, when we really think about it, like water, shelter, and food, the arts are an essential part of our daily lives. The arts spark creativity that transform us and give us our sense of identity. The arts and creativity lead to discovery they engage us and help us express our human voice. The arts allow us individually and as a culture to be seen, to be heard, remembered, and valued. One of the newest areas of importance in our field is in the area of arts and healthcare. It's interesting to remember that throughout recorded history, many of humankind's healing rituals involved the arts, whether it be song, dance, theater, storytelling, visual arts. While the modern day focus on medicine is astonishing in its advancement scientifically and technologically, a person at the end of the day still has to heal thyself. Research shows that the arts used in healthcare settings reduces the length of hospital stays, decreases the need for multiple medical visits, reduces reports of pain and anxiety, decreases the need for sedatives, reduces depression, and overall improves the quality of life. One of my favorite stories is that of one of my staff members' sons, who was a pre-med student at Carroll College, and he asked his advisor what he recommended as to a major for his undergraduate degree. And the advisor told him, I'd rather see a new medical student with an undergraduate degree in art history than biology or chemistry. We can learn science, but the specialized talents and skills of observations are what get us to diagnosis and treatment. These skills are taught better through the arts. Nationally, arts organizations and healthcare companies are beginning to take these facts seriously. 
the Joint Commission on Accreditation of Healthcare Organizations, known as JACO, served healthcare facilities around the country. They found that over half of them have arts and healthcare programs. The National Endowment for the Arts has a strategic goal to increase the integration of arts and healthcare. And the National Advocacy Organization, Americans for the Arts, says that an investment in the arts and healthcare is an investment in the health of America. Montana is graying, as we know, at a faster rate than the rest of the country. Life expectancy is increasing and medications to prolong cognitive and physical wellness offer both joys and concerns as we look to how to keep these lives vital and vibrant. Again, the arts are part of the solution. The Montana Arts Council is proud to be selected as one of 13 states involved with the National Center for Creative Aging, an offshoot of the President's Council on Aging. This work is dedicated to fostering an understanding of the vital relationship between creative expression and healthy aging. Three years ago, our agency undertook a first ever major study to develop a baseline on arts and healthcare in Montana. We surveyed artists, arts organizations, healthcare professionals, and administrators. We found that 80% of the direct care providers and administrators believe that the arts can reduce patient stress and anxiety levels. A majority also indicate that the arts can increase patient, family, and caregiver satisfaction. The Montana Arts Council wants us all to get more serious about promoting the benefits of the arts in healthcare and look for meaningful ways for much greater integration. I'd like to ask each of you to think about today, what can I do to carry this conversation forward? What steps could I take when I leave this meeting? Living Art is a perfect go-to resource for all of you in Missoula. Kim Barabee Hurdle on our staff, who runs our arts and healthcare program, has highest praise for the organization. She has said repeatedly, when it comes to the arts and healing in the state of Montana, Living Art is a leader. Kim also has a very unique story that I'd like to share with you today because it really speaks to how an individual is impacted in an arts and healthcare setting. About 10 years ago, she experienced a real life and death situation with a staph infection in her pacemaker. She was in a coma for several, she was in a coma for a month and intensive care for several months nearly died. We were all scared to death. I asked her to write about how the arts impacted her healing and recovering from this horrendous situation and here's what she had to say. As a patient with congenital heart defects, I've spent my share of time in state-of-the-art hospitals and world-renowned clinics. I come to appreciate the artwork in these centers and the fact that the art is placed wherever patients might need to take a breath and need a moment of bolstering. Just such a place would be a dressing room where patients don the proverbial blue snowflake gown before submitting to difficult testing procedures. The knowledge on the part of hospital designers, or lack thereof, that a grayed lavender wall color relaxes patients where a bright yellow wall induces stress can be critical for all involved. My favorite stories of art in hospitals began for me as I woke up from a coma. Staff alongside my family tried to convince me that I was now in Seattle, in the hospital, after I was transported from Helena. As I drifted in and out of consciousness, I would hear snippets of conversation and few thought I was hearing or understanding what was being said. One morning, my sister Karen walked into the room. She said, have you guys walked on that floor that sounds like the chiming of bells? Or seen the amazing metal horse sculpture in the main lobby, my daughter Blake offered. 
I replied, Patrick Zentz and Deborah Butterfield, Montana artists. These facts were checked out and reported to the doctors caring for me. I'd said my first sensible words in almost three weeks. I'd never been to this hospital, but the information I offered showed a variety of cogn cognitive abilities they feared I'd lost in the grave infection I had contracted during my pacemaker replacement. After more weeks of surgery and therapies, my rewards for accomplishments were to leave the ICU floor and then the cardiac care floor to visit the art I had described and see the entire collection. I realized that art was purchased for the collection from all the states that sent their most critical care patients to the University of Washington Medical Center. I was taken to Healing Gardens, where the sunshine hit my face for the first time in a month and a half. My patient room had art on the wall, which became a focal point during my pain and disappointments. I was brought to an art therapy class where my family and I made beautiful things. I learned to walk while pushing my wheelchair around the eighth floor rehab unit. Each time I made the loop, I'd come to Montana artist Ernie Pepione's painting of hunting buffalo from his wheelchair. All the artwork on that floor was made by former patients, I discovered. Even the ceiling tiles in our rooms were decorated with messages from former patients wishing us courage. As an artist and a patient, I was inspired and comforted by the art and arts programming and by the staff and the foundations that saw the need for this important aspect of the healing process. The Montana Arts Council is so proud to have been involved in living art and all the fine work that they do. I'd like you all to join me now, live and in person, to give them a huge round of applause to celebrate the fine work they've done. And thank you for letting me be with you today.